Welcome to the Producers Bank Podcast, where we share weekly our best insights, ideas, and thinking in finance and investing for producers in a world of change, disruption, and chaos. Welcome to the Producers Bank Podcast, where we share weekly insights, ideas, and our best thinking in finance for producers in a world that is experiencing great change, massive disruption, and going through a lot of chaos. My name is MC Lobstrom, and I'm joined by my co-host, Carl Schnitzer. Carl, uh, please share a little bit about your background and journey with our listeners. Sure. So my background started in law enforcement. I was a Philadelphia police officer for several years. That led into real estate investing, where I was buying fix and flip houses. I was buying single family rentals. That led into uh, discovering your own banking system through MC, where I started using my own bank to invest in real estate more, which led into getting my realtor license and being a licensed realtor in Pennsylvania. Now I'm no longer in law enforcement. I'm just full-time investor, entrepreneur, and one of MC's cash flow engineers. And my name is MC Lobster, and I've personally implemented and executed your own banking system strategy in my personal business and investing economy for over a decade. Um, and uh, it's it's been an incredible journey, uh, and it's helped me uh absolutely put rocket fuel on what I was already doing over a decade ago and essentially take my own finance to uh, new levels. In our first episode, we're going to talk about what is a producer and what is a the things that a producer should be banking. So Carl, what are some of the things that you think about when you think of the term a producer? Producers are the backbone of the economy. And in a capitalistic society, producers are all the business owners that keeps the economy flowing. They produce and create value for the economy. You know, if you think about what a producer is, you know, and here's how I look at it, is producers and creators are the people that generate value in any economy by identifying massive challenges or problems that the marketplace has or desirable outcomes, I guess, that a lot of people in the marketplace desire. And essentially what producers and creators then do is they find solutions to the massive challenges and the problems. And then they find or or also formulate ways to take to, to help people achieve those desirable outcomes, which they achieve in the marketplace. So essentially what they do is they take people from where they are today, their current situation, and through their products and services, their elegant solution, take them to a desired situation. I think one thing to note too is the country that we live in, the United States, there's more producers and creators than anywhere else where you can come solve a problem build a better strategy, something more efficiently and provide value to consumers. And it's easier here than anywhere else. I would agree with that. Uh, Being originally from South Africa and coming to the United States, boy, 21 years ago, I would definitely agree with that, that there is a lot of folks here because it's encouraged. It's been part of the culture. It's in the DNA of people that um, have been born in in the United States. Um, but yeah, producers and creators essentially is the thing that is needed in a world where there's massive problems and challenges uh, because essentially they solve them. So in other um, countries, if you have a problem, you may be looking at the government to come fix your problem. Whereas in America, we just need that next entrepreneur to solve it. That's right. That's 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 absolutely right. And uh, where a lot of people are doomy and gloomy about where we are today. Mm-hmm. globally and also in the United States where there's a ton of challenges, a ton of problems. Um, I am still very, very, very uh, optimistic and pretty much excited 
because there are so many producers and creators um, out there, and there are so many challenges and problems out there, because you know, in the in a, in a free marketplace, these producers and creators are going to come up with incredible solutions to all of these these challenges and problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the the producer is the actual person. But then the second part you mentioned too is what they bank on and the things that they bank on, which is going to be the second part of this show. Um, so do you want to talk about that, MC? Yeah, let's talk a, a, a about that. I just want to wrap up the first point that a producer is someone that creates value in the marketplace and continues to pr- produce and create for the marketplace um, because they know too how the universe works by by producing and creating value for the marketplace through coming up with solutions to challenges and problems, they will be rewarded. And the way that they will be rewarded is through a medium of exchange, which essentially is what a lot of people refer to as money or currency, right? Or capital. And that's how you generate capital. Um, Now, what do producers bank? Because that is essentially the name of the show, the producers bank. Now, before we get into what they bank, what do you think of when you think uh, of the concept, a bank? So what I think of is, you know, the traditional, you know, financial bank where you can store money in a safe, well, quote unquote, safe place. Um, You know, that's just the traditional definition of the bank. Right. So you're thinking about a vehicle in which people would make deposits. And most people, when they think of a bank, they think financial deposits, right? So they would go to a a bank and they would deposit money or currency or fiat currency in uh, in that bank. And they will continue to make deposits because they essentially uh, warehouse their savings there, right? Yes. And you hope that it grows. Right. And in this case, savings would be capital. So when I think of a bank too, it's a place where you make deposits. And I think of different type of places that you could make deposits. Um, and we'll get into that in a second. But I think of, a, of essentially a vehicle that you make deposits in because essentially um, you're depositing something in, in, into a place uh, you depositing something of value in a place which you find valuable and you want to preserve that and you want to grow that and you want mm-hmm. it to compound or accumulate in that in that vehicle. Um, so let's look at a couple of different places that producers can essentially uh, bank and, and, and places that they can make deposits in. And again, in this show, yes, we talk about finance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we talk about many other different things uh, around finance. Finance is only one thing when it comes to the game of capital and wealth. Uh, so one of the things that I would start with, the first place that a producer actually banks and makes deposits into is him or herself. Um, and that's by investing in themselves as their number one and greatest asset, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think that this may be one of the hardest to get started. You know, you and I have talked before. It, it almost seems like culture is after you graduate high school, after you graduate college, you just stop learning and you're not investing in yourself. You're not reading books. You're not reading, taking online courses, anything. And that's the first part to being a producer and, and banking on yourself, investing in yourself, taking the time to learn a new skill uh, something that's valuable. As Mark Twain said, uh, don't, th- don't let uh, schooling get in the way of your education. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's how society views uh, learning and education is by going to school mm-hmm. and then by going to uh, a university or a college. And then maybe by going then to a, a you know, a, a, another educational institution where they earn a PhD or they earn, mm-hmm. you know, an, um, a master's degree, or they go to medical school or um, they earn a, another higher degree. And that's kind of what society looks at as essentially education and learning. So producers, uh, they, well, producers bank in 
and on themselves by investing in themselves. How do they invest in themselves? Well, they invest in themselves through learning, reading, listening to podcasts, seminars, workshops, you know, doing courses, joining masterminds, which we'll get to in a second. So they, they, they actually are, um, they're actually learning uh, things that will help them and assist them today and help them in the pursuit of what they accomplished today. And, and they also add skill sets, which are relevant, which is very, very important to um, utilize and taking people from their current, their, their current situation to a desired situation through value mm-hmm. creation for them. The second thing that I would say that producers bank um, is they bank uh, in the, re- the area of relationships uh, because they see the value of relationships. So they make deposits in their own family. They make deposits in their community, in their church. They make cap- deposits in their networks, whether it be a professional network or a personal network. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everyone's heard the, the quote, um, you know, you're the average of the five people you surround yourself with. And the more and, you know, I've learned that firsthand in my journey from, you know, people I hung out with years ago and people I hung out with, hung out with now are two completely different crowds. And the people that I hang out with now are a lot more successful. So those are the deposits that folks make. Um, you know, a mentor of mine that shared once, the, you know, really the wealth formula, which blew me away. We essentially said, it's taking your personal capital, which is, again, your mental capital, your knowledge, your education, your skill sets. And when you combine that uh, with your relationship capital, which be your family, your community, uh, and your network, essentially, that's going to deliver financial capital. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people just focus on financial capital. And that's their main focus and driver of everything. And then they don't achieve the goals that they set out for themselves with regards to their financial capital. And they're like, I don't understand why I'm not generating financial capital. Well, if you have to look at the ingredients, what will get you there. And that is, of course, your your personal capital, your mental capital, and your relationship capital. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think of it just, you know, as my being a realtor, my human capital of my knowledge of real estate combined with my network, you only make money as a realtor. If you know people and and you make a brand for yourself, there's my human capital. There's my relationship capital from my network. And that equals a financial capital of a commission, you know, in in the simplest of terms. Uh, So now you've generated capital, which is actually the financial capital, which producers also bank. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And they put it in a vehicle which allows them to be their own bank. And essentially that vehicle is at the center of what we call your own banking system. And we're going to talk a lot in this podcast about exactly what that vehicle is, how to position that vehicle as effectively and efficiently as possible. And essentially then how to structure your own, your own banking system. So a lot of people are familiar with banking capital. That is not um, a revelation for a lot, a lot of people that are listening to us. Um, so one of the other areas that producers bank is their own business, right? Absolutely. They're always reinvesting in their business, investing in marketing, investing in um, hiring, delegating more tasks to free up their time. They're, when you look at a business owner, the return on investment they can make is always much higher in their business than they can anywhere else in the stock market. There is not an investment out there that could match or even come anywhere close Mm -hmm. uh, to the return that producers get in their own businesses. It just doesn't Mm -hmm. exist. So it is one of the great places where producers bank and make deposits in is their own business um, because there's just no other return in the marketplace that, that can absolutely match that. And just for an example, too, I had a conversation with somebody about this. Think of, you know, if, if a company just runs a Facebook ad, some kind of campaign, and they generate from that Facebook ad alone, just say, say $100,000 in that Facebook ad, they ran maybe $30,000. The return on investment is better on that one 
form of advertisement than they can get anywhere else. When you put it into terms like that, or, you know, think about an employee too, you're going to see an employee, if you're seeing it as an expense of $60,000 a year, you could look at it also as an investment. You're investing in $60,000 a year to take admin tasks off of your plate where you can grow the income now. The return on investment is, is higher than you'll make anywhere else. Yeah, think about it this way. There was someone uh, that I had a conversation with that um, spent about $100,000 hiring an employee in their business. But that employee brought in, if they had to look at it in terms of the, the growth of the business, over $2 million in business that year for them. Mm -hmm. Now, where, <laughs> where in the marketplace does that producer get that same return on $100,000 Invest mm -hmm. by hiring someone, and, tw and within 12 months, that person brought in essentially over $2 million additional in business for them. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, too, MC, for anyone listening that is not familiar with the rule of 72, whatever your return on investment is, divide that from 72, and that's how many years it will take for your money to double. So just for instance, if you get a 10% return in the stock market or your, your 401k or whatever it is that you currently are investing in, a 10% return, your money will double every seven years. If you can up that to a 50%, 100%, 200% return by investing in your business, your capital is going to double. And the more capital you can double, the more time you can free up, the more time you can free up and delegate, the higher you can grow, the more you can grow. Yep. Uh, and then the final uh, area that I um, had made a note of where a producer's bank is then in their own investment portfolio. Mm -hmm. And there's a time, obviously, when you're diversifying outside of your business, and there's many different strategies on how to do that. Some folks invest in businesses that are outside of their business. Some folks invest um, in, in, well, in, in other businesses, they acquire other businesses, which is complementary to their own business. That's another way of investing outside of your, your core business, but you're investing in another business, which you now also own, that is um, complementary to your own business. But there comes a time and a place where you do need diversification. Um, but that is also you know, a huge, huge uh, area of where producers bank and make deposits. One thing to add to that too, MC, you can invest in other businesses, but you can also invest in new streams within your business. And, and a good example of this is, you know, a real estate brokerage. They receive money from real estate commissions, but they could also add a title company. They could have a mortgage company. They could add a cleaning service. These are all different, you know, forms of income that revolve around their original key business. To summarize, we talked a little bit about what a producer is. And producers create and produce value for the marketplace by taking people in the marketplace or other businesses from their current situation to a desired situation. And in the process, through an elegant solution, they provide a ton of value for them. So where do producers bank? Where should they be making deposits? They should be making deposits in themselves because they themselves are their greatest assets. Then they should be making deposits in relationships, whether it's their family, their community, their network. They should be then taking capital and making deposits in a vehicle, which they can position effectively and efficiently and create their own banking system. And they can warehouse their financial capital in that vehicle and inside of their, that system where they have full control over it. And then they should be making deposits in their own business and in their own investment portfolio. If you're interested in learning more how to structure your own banking system, you can go to theproducersbank.com, theproducersbank.com for an informational webinar. Welcome to the Producers Bank Podcast, where we share weekly our best insights, ideas, and thinking in finance and investing for producers in a world of change, disruption, and chaos.